case ID 427302, uh, con case. Council Perry Sockard. Good morning, I'm Michelle Roberts, by number 9168, on behalf of the plaintiff, Daniel Kahn, now known as Daniel Bain. Good morning, Your Honor. Kurt Harris, Burner 5354, on behalf of Devin Kahn, I'm appearing in none other capacity with my client here today. All right. Um, there was a uh, motion initially for a child interview, uh, enhance custody, and then there was an opposition filed by the uh, plaintiff for a uh, relocation. Is your is your client set on doing that? She would like to, yes. Well, there's a difference in like to because I have the right to find out whether she would or kind she of would feeling go. it. She, she, she would go, but she, she's not going to go without a court order or consent. All right. Well, again, I could take that in consideration when yes, make I, the ultimate I, I, under, I understand that, but she... And it's an enormous burden, as you know, with the statute. I, I understand the burden, but for her, for the best interests of both her and Dylan, especially financially, they need to go. They do. Well, get it. That would be, you're the one who has to make that case. I understand. And so, um, and it would not happen in the middle of the school year. No, that we know. So you want, I mean, it wouldn't happen in the middle of semester, and I don't know that it would during the year itself, so. She wouldn't take them, she wouldn't take them out of, uh, during, like, during the middle of a, semester or anything like that. It would, have to, it would either have to be a break or at the end of the school year. Right. I don't, uh, because these parties have not been back, the last order only uh, allots the defendant holiday visitation. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So what has been the uh, de facto for the last six months to a year? Prior to May of this year, the parties reverted back to the 2012 order where um, both parties were living in Las Vegas. Mom has primary physical custody. Dad had every weekend. And, th and then 30 days in the, in the summer, during the uh, summer break. That, that's, uh, that was the schedule that they were um, exercising until May when Dad decided to send a text message to my client stating, oh, on advice of um, counsel, we need to revert to the 2015 court order um, because that's the, last, that's the last court order. And and we attached those text messages where my client is. We've been exercising the 2012. Now, all of a sudden, it's summer after we had this discussion about moving and you want to revert back to the 2015. Then once summer was over, Dad sent another text message to Mom going, oh, you know what, we're going back to 2012, now I get them every single weekend. So, <laughs> um, quite frankly, if Dad doesn't have a problem, uh, you know, complying with the 2015 order, he, he should, since that was uh, an order when Mom was living out of state, then he shouldn't, technically shouldn't have a problem. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the, why he's referring to the 2015 order, because I show that that's the holiday schedule one. Well, that is the most recent order, Your Honor, I guess. What I'm, uh, we agree with some of what's been said there. My client would have you know that he's had very liberal visitation since 2016. In fact, uh, a joint physical custodial type arrangement was in place. And this last summer, I don't know about all these reversions and one thing or another, but this last summer my client exercised the entire summer with Dylan. And at the close of the summer, although they live here in Las Vegas, Mom says, you don't get to see him at all. Because we're on this 2015 order, and it's as though we live in Utah, and that you're not able to come see him. So, what is your if I interview him at FMC? Do you think he's going to want to go to Texas or stay here? My client is under the impression that right. he'll want to stay. Why don't we start there? I we, well, first of all, I have objections to a child interview because since he filed this motion requesting a child interview, Dad has taken um, Dylan twice with, uh, during Mom's custodial time without notifying Mom. Now, it, um, basically, you know, take, picking him up before school, taking him to breakfast without notifying mom that he was going to do so. Mom wouldn't have an issue with that, 
if she was notified of it, but he's twice now he's done that. And then uh, during that time, since filing the motion, he's, he's given mom, uh, he's given da uh, Dylan money. Um, to me, it's almost like he's bribing the child too. Listen, uh, Mr. Rob, do you know that they look for that over there? Unless you want to pony up and go to it, they'll look more in depth. If your client wants to pay for an outsource child interview, I'll do that, but otherwise I'll set it over to FMC. But they look for stuff, they're professionals, they look for that kind of stuff. Yeah, and also, um, Dad has been telling Dylan, he's been involving Dylan with this, saying, you know, your mom is going to drag us to court, that so you stuff need to will come. That stuff will come out too, that's the kind of stuff they well, ask them over there. I hope it would, but it, sometimes, it, you know, unfortunately, um, there's concerns. I mean, you know, are we allowed to, to provide you with specific questions maybe to no. ask? No, it's going to be de facto. What the de facto arrangement is, and whether he desires to re relocate with his mom to Texas, and then just a general interview. The general interview precipitates or starts the other, where they start asking him just generally about his life, and that's where the uh, coaching type of stuff will come in. And I, I'll be honest with you, I find it kind of suspect that your client would not want the child interview by an independent source. It wouldn't be, except for the fact that d Dad has been That's saved. what they look for. That's alleged in every case I'm here. That walks through my doors on our child interview. The other party says, oh, they're going to tell. If they think it's not going to come back in their favor, I should preface that with that. Because some parties are adamant. This is the way that de facto's been. This is the way de facto's been. And no one gives until I get the child interview report back and then someone's ousted. So... I, I, listen, I have the right, if, especially if your client's going to move, I have to know what the 12-year-old child's desires are. So it's a requirement. So if, in fact, he says no right up front, your client, I guess, would still have the right to go forward, but we might require more from there. So I am going to do the child interview. So what has been the, even though your client didn't like it, what has been going on since May, days and times? Um, now they're back to the weekend, uh, what? Okay, they've been, they've been exercising the 2015 schedule. I don't know what that is. That is where it's, it, he gets the holidays and then... That's all he gets? You know, no, he gets 20, he gets 21 days of, uh, time with 30 days notice. Uh, 20, I, I guess. He gets 21 additional days besides the holiday schedules. So literally he could do that every month. 21 days for the year uh, with a 30-day notice. So, Are you yeah. guessing? Huh? Are you guessing? No, no, no. I'm saying it's 21 days for the year that he I'm not. Take. Listen, I'm trying to be realistic. I'm not going back to an out-of-state schedule. That's ludicrous. She's not the one that wanted to go back to the out-of-state schedule. I want to know what's been happening but since that's May. What, that, that's what, what, the, what are the that's set what days according to your client? Weekends, Your Honor, for the most part. I think my client can address that quite I don't clearly. need to. So his time will be considered from at least Friday morning till Sunday evening. If you want specifics, because before it was after school. And that's joint physical custody under this in court's interpretation, Rivero 2. So before it was, uh, it was picking up at school, so I'm just simply going to order that that be uh, she's to drop the child off to school. If school's not in session, then the child will go over to the uh, defendants at 9 a.m. Otherwise, it'll be a drop off to school uh, by the plaintiff, but it will be considered the defendant's time, and he will keep the child until uh, Sunday evening at 8. Are you scheduling a evidentiary hearing? Not at this point. I see what the child says. Why your your client would truly go forward with a uh, a evidentiary hearing if in fact the twelve year old comes back and says I don't want to move to Texas. I want to stay here with my friends and family. She would still go forward with an evidentiary hearing. In order to financially care for her child, she would. We have one of the best economies going on right now here locally. So finance, I don't know. Listen, that's on, that's on you and you know what you have to prove. And it's not just finances. It's not just that she'll be financially better off. 
And I still, again, and the reason I say that when we come back is I might still, if in fact he's adamant he doesn't want to go, have your client pay for a relocation risk assessment because I don't know why I would force a 12-year-old to go to a state if in fact he doesn't truly want to go because your client can make more money in Texas, allegedly. Return date, Madam Clerk, in uh, 30 days. We'll decide where we're going to go at that point. Mr. Harris, if you want to give me a temporary order. Um, October 31st at 2.30. Do these guys want to try mediation after the child interview, or no? My client would be inclined to. We can, yeah, we can try mediation. I mean, my client has been trying, you know, to work with that. Yeah, but again, the problem is if the issue is she wants to go to Texas, I doubt he's going to agree to that. The the issue also is is the things that he's doing that he's not proper to have uh, joint physical custody of the, the minor child. And our issue is she just denied him the child altogether, Judge. He, she when did the not. child texts Dad and says, how come I can't see you? Why can't I come see you? Well, Mr. Harris, if you want to prepare me the order, then it will be an order at this point, rather Absolutely. than the uh, guess at what they've been doing. Again, all I'm, all I'm truly doing at this point is modifying. Uh, I, I can't tell until we have a trial on it. The defendant indicates he's had more time. He hasn't, though. I don't know that, Ms. Roberts. You. There, He's not going to agree to what your client's saying. She's not going to agree to what he's saying. Can we agree on that? Yes, but I think it's a mistake. That's why we have trials. That's why we have trials. We might have to have a trial just on whether there's been a de facto change in custody. But if, in fact, we're going to continue with the relocation, we'll absolutely do it at the same time. Okay. But let's start with the interview. Again, do they want to mediate after? Because then I have to tweak the order accordingly. Because then we'll be back in like 60 days once they review the child interview report and see if they can reach an agreement. Yeah, but then check, put a number two by mediate after they have uh, reviewed the child interview report. All right, as council is uh, free to look at the report as well, um, see if they reach an agreement mediation. If not, we'll decide where we're going on December 3rd, whether we're having uh, one or both trials set at that point. Thank you, Judge. Okay? Thank you. All right, guys, have a good day. Have a great day. Uh, Tori will give you the FMC referral. Make sure you guys check in.